All right, little scientists, the last time we were on here talking about changing states of matter, you will remember we were still talking about how matter has measurable physical properties and that these physical properties can be used to classify matter into groups. Physical properties are things that we can observe with our senses. I can look at it, I can smell it, I can hear it, I can taste it, and we can feel it. I can feel that it's rough, I can feel that it's smooth, I can hear that it's quiet, I can hear that it's loud. I can see that the color is blue, I can see that the color is red. I can make observations about how things are changing. I can see that ice, whenever thermal energy is introduced to it, will change from a solid to a liquid. And remember, there were three words that we were talking about. We can make predictions, we can observe those predictions, and we can record what we see. So a prediction is what we think is going to happen. Every great scientist makes predictions and you are all great scientists. You all have great scientific minds. You're going to change the world around us, right? So we look at things and we tell what we think is going to happen. We can write down our predictions. We call that recording. We can record what we think is going to happen. After we record what we think is going to happen, what do we do? We have to do it. And so we're going to observe what we actually see happening. So we predict, we observe, and then as all of this is happening, we are recording what we're seeing. I'm recording the observations that we make. Now, we know that whenever we add thermal energy to an ice cube, that the ice changes from a solid into a liquid. The thermal energy, it decreases the temperature of the ice changing it from a solid ice into a liquid water. The question we're gonna to ask today is, what happens if we increase the temperature? What happens if we take a beaker of water and we stick it on a hot plate and we increase the temperature of that water? Now I'm gonna put my safety goggles on. Remember we have our safety equipment. Safety goggles are made to protect our eyes. I've got my gloves on to protect my hands but you also have seen oven mitts. It's kind of like one piece and your mom uses them when she cooks. You can also use that as well. And then we have our hot plate. A hot plate is a tool that is used to add thermal energy to things that we might be investigating. So I'm going to take my hot plate. I'm going to turn it up a little bit and then we are going to start making some observations about what we think is going to happen. All right. So far, I don't see anything, but not very much thermal energy has been added. I know that you have experienced thermal energy. We've all experienced thermal energy. Thermal energy is a fancy word for heat energy. That's all it is. Thermal equals heat, heat equals thermal. They are synonymous terms. Synonym means they mean the same thing. So we've experienced thermal energy when we go outside on a hot day. We've experienced a lack of thermal energy during the winter because we're doing this and we have jackets on and we're freezing and we say, oh, I just can't wait for summer. Why can we not wait for summer? Because summer is the time where we get the most direct energy from the sun and so our temperatures are warmer. Now, I am starting to make some observations because I'm starting to see that little bubbles are starting to move around off in my beaker. By the way, this is a beaker. This is a tool that we use in science as well. We use it to measure volume but we also use it for stuff like this when we're trying to having to add thermal energy or test chemical components. All right, so I'm looking at it. There's a lot of action going on off in there. It seems like the warmer it gets, the more stuff is moving around. So that heat is causing those particles to start dancing and moving and shaking and baking. And so this is cool. Now what's going to happen next? It looks like the water is starting to, things are starting just to move and move. Okay, so there's definitely a lot going on inside this beaker. There's a lot going on inside this beaker because of this thermal energy. I'm starting to notice little bubbles are starting to form around the brim. Right? I'm starting to notice little bubbles. So the thermal energy is definitely having an effect on this water. Okay, now I'm starting to see, looks like it's getting foggy on the edges of the cup over here so where it wasn't foggy before now it's starting to get foggy on the edges of the cup a lot is happening inside this beaker right now okay now I'm curious because I want to know what do you think is going to happen if I continue to heat this beaker up what is going to happen to the water that's in there if I continue to add this thermal energy what are your thoughts what are you thinking 
What is your prediction on what you are going to observe if I continue in this process? You can write that down off in your journal. I predict that the water will blank because blank. Oh, wow. Now I'm starting to see droplets of water forming all on the sides of the beaker. And a lot of bubbles are coming up from the bottom now. A lot of bubbles. If you've ever cooked noodles or your mom has ever worked off in the, like your mom is in the kitchen or your dad is in the kitchen, either one of them cooks, or you cook, you'll know. Okay, now notice. Okay, so I'm starting to see that it looks like something is rising from the beaker. It looks like smoke, but it's not smoke. What we're observing is water vapor, okay? What we're observing is water vapor. A really cool way to see that is I can take this and I can stick it right on the top. Now what happens is, is this water is being heated to a point to where it's changing from a liquid into a gas that we call water vapor, right? And so if I take this water vapor and I cool it, I can prove to you that this is going to be water vapor because it's going to start turning back in to water and we'll talk about why that happens later but what we have successfully proven is that when water is heated now the boiling point of water is hundred degrees Celsius we told the other day that the freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius but at hundred degrees Celsius water will change from a liquid into a gas and this is an observable change that we as scientists can make you guys are awesome all right so what do i want you to do today i want you to think about a situation where you have observed this change happen we call this change evaporation okay evaporation is when water is heated to 100 degrees celsius and the water will change from a liquid into a gas called water vapor. I want you to write about a time or write about a situation where you've observed this state change happen where water changes from a liquid into a gas. You might think about a time where your mom was running the shower water and it was really, really hot off in there. You might think about something that happened to you within the kitchen environment when you're cooking or something along those lines. But I want you to think about a time where you have observed a state change of water between a lit from a liquid to a gas and I want you to record that I want you to describe that in detail use your words use all those wonderful words that are in those wonderful scientific minds thank you guys we will be back soon with more amazing science for you to do and for you to learn from have a great day